This is Twit. Oh yeah, the Google Domains thing. This Jeez. this is going to be fun. Going along the 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 road of uh, you know, can we trust the big the big technology companies that we've that we've grown uh, so close to over the years? And Google, time and time again, man, they just keep reminding us you can't trust us to hold on to something that you love. Uh, that's that even might be a success, but maybe not to Google's metric of success, whatever the heck that is. But Google domains uh, getting the axe. And according to Ars Technica, uh, selling its domain hosting business to Squarespace. This is going to close or it's expected to close anyways in the third quarter of 2023, eight years uh, since it was launched. And I mean, a lot of uh, a lot of people, a lot of companies relying on this now suddenly going to go and, uh, you know, go in the hands of, of Squarespace. So Google's getting out of it. And what do we think of Squarespace? I mean, I, well, I, I, yeah, Mike, I mean, I have a site on Squarespace. That's, that's my I, main I, thing. I have a site. Yeah. I like the site, but beyond that, I don't know. <laughs> I have several and uh, it's a mixed bag. I mean, they, they, yeah. uh, they're very good in certain things. Uh, in fact, uh, gastronomad.net is a Squarespace site. And one of the reasons we use it is because we use their e-commerce for people to sign up for experiences. Wow. So it's all very integrated uh, into Stripe and so on. And, and it works uh, really well. They have some nicely designed templates. And so it's a, but, but they're, they're, and they have pretty good tech support. Uh, I, I should say better than pretty good. They have good tech support. They're a little slow to evolve. I think it's fine for them to have this, uh, the, the, this, this service. What's once again, disappointing is that they're, Google has this thing that people are using. They're happy with it. It's associated with workspace. People who bought into Google stuff are once again being kind of uh, shafted mm -hmm. by Google, in this case, not closing it, but essentially selling it off. Right. And it's just, once again, it's just so confusing about why Google does these kinds of things. Why sell it? Uh, are they strapped for cash? Uh, it was profitable, so that doesn't make any sense. Uh, it just it just doesn't make any sense to keep pulling the rug out from your most passionate users who follow your lead, do what you say. You know, they roll this kind of stuff out to big fanfare. Everybody gets excited. Users go rushing in to use the service. And then later, Google just says, nah, we're, we're, we're not going to be associated with it anymore. Yeah, and one of the reasons that, I mean, obviously I've been a Google fanboy going back years. I wrote a book called What Will Google Do? Mm -hmm. I'm on a podcast called This Week at Google. There you go. One of the reasons that I that I liked Google and trusted them in the past was that these were things that just made you feel good about Google. Mm -hmm. They were worth doing for that purpose. In, in, in another world, we call it branding, right? It, it just had a, it, 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 it was a, in a world that was filled with sleazy promoters, the the um, um, uh, URL world, the domain world, thank you. Um, I'm thanking myself for coming up with a word I couldn't come up with. Um, Go, daddy. In the domain world was filled with, <laughs> with yicky yeah. places. Google yeah. said, okay, okay, we're going to come in. We're going to clean it up. We're going to do something decent, decent price. Boom, boom, boom. We're going to run it profitably, as you said, Mike. And it was great. And now just to drop it. There's just no trusting them for anything. You know, at some point, are they going to get rid of Gmail? Oh, my goodness. I mean, how many it's times have we had this conversation? Or Google Photos? Right. Yeah. How, how terrifying would it be if they if they said, okay, we're, we're closing Google Photos in one month? And that sounds ridiculous to me. But yet, at the but, same time, I would never be surprised. At this point, I just would never be surprised if they killed anything. I guess Gmail would surprise me because... But yes. I mean, even then, like, you know, maybe Google decides, oh, we're not killing it, but we're selling it to Squarespace, you know, like <laughs> suddenly Squarespace yeah, right. has Gmail. I don't know. Like, I'm not, I think that's there, uh, someone, uh, I think Jeff, you had put an article in here uh, written by David Heinemeyer Hansen. Yeah, I don't, I don't know him, but, but the headline grabbed me. Yeah. Which you can't is, trust Google. You can't trust Google. And uh, I, I love the the way he ends this article. He says, all I'm saying is you better have a backup plan. Be that for your collaboration, your email, your home security system. Anything that reads made by Google implicitly has the subscript until we don't give an F anymore printed below. And that just feels more and more true. I don't know how many times really we've had is. this exact story. Insert new 
Google thing into it. And each time, more and more, I, I believe, more and more people who were once very passionate about Google's approach to these things and feeling exactly like you were talking about, Jeff, that, you know, Google does something uh, in a nicer way versus the competitors that kind of feel slimy and everything like that. Like, that's great. But if we never have any sort of confidence that Google's going to stick the landing and keep supporting something that seems successful and good for the company, good for users and everything like that, why are we going to continue trusting Google? Why, why would yep. we do that? At a certain point, we're, we're just kind of crazy if we do that because we know it's going to go away eventually. They've already, they've already scraped off their shoe millions of super passionate Google fanboys by closing Google Reader, by closing Google Plus, by doing all the things that they've done over the years. And, um, and, 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 and so there, there really aren't a whole lot of loyal customers left of Google. There are people who are locked in. And apparently that's good enough for Google as long as they can keep selling ads and making the money that they do in the ways that they do. But how is it possible to be within 10 miles of the Apple campus and not think, huh, wow, Apple's users are super loyal, devoted to the Apple cause. And one of the reasons for that is people know for sure they're not going to suddenly kill the iPhone. They're not going to suddenly say, oh, you know what? We, we made a mistake getting into the Apple TV business. We're just going to close all that stuff down. Uh, so, Mike, let me try this out on you. Let me yeah. try this out on you. Hearing you say that, um, just... De Leo moment, devil's advocate moment, or actually not, uh, just a crazy idea moment. Is Google, Apple is a consumer company. Apple requires people to yep. buy their stuff. Mm. Is Google turning into an enterprise B two B company? Is it well, is you know it they, behind? It's yeah, sure they make Android phones, but then again, they really license Android out to everybody else. Mm. Yeah, they've got Gmail, but it's really about you know uh, uh, enterprise stuff. They have enterprise. Um, SaaS services, advertising is all B2B. Um, and now that they own the marketplace both ways, it's really about advertisers and media back and forth. Is it no longer a consumer company and brand? Well, that, the reason you're asking that question is because it's unknowable. It's confusing. It's a confusing point. If you look at a company like Microsoft, okay, Microsoft has clearly nearly completed their pivot to becoming an enterprise company. And they are so successful. If you look at the valuation of technology companies, of course, you would expect Apple to be at the very top of valuation. But if you look at Microsoft, Microsoft is number two, right behind Apple. Microsoft is almost as valuable That's as impressive. Apple, which is stunning mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. But they've done it by being pretty clear that they're about business and the enterprise. And then you have Google. Google has, you know, they sell a smartphone, then they don't. Now they're selling a smartphone again. Then they buy Motorola. Then they spin off Motorola. <laughs> then so they have confusing. the they have the they, they have the laptops. Then they don't want to do laptops anymore. And and then they buy Nest, right? And then they get rid of Nest. You know, they, they don't get rid of Nest, but they they sort of don't do much with it. Uh you know, this, if they wanted to be an enterprise company, okay, get, like once and for all, get rid of Nest. Stop making um, consumer play. I mean, they are, they dominate education, for example, uh, with with Chromebooks uh, to a very large extent. They're just so confusing. And if they wanted to, if they, if they really wanted to do the kinds of things Apple does, they would have one messaging app instead of 13 or 12 or nine or 15 or whatever it is they have, nobody knows. It's unknowable what their messaging uh, products are. They would have one, that would be Google messages or something like that. And that could be the catalyst that would bring people into all these other things. But no, they, they just, they can't seem to get control of themselves. They're like hey, a so what do you think? teenager. Since you will always be my top expert on Android, uh, <laughs> what do you think about Google and its fate? I mean, it just seems like time and time again, Google can't coordinate between itself 
to get everybody on the same page to know like like all that I could think of when I was when I was listening to you Mike and and thinking about the question is like I don't even know that Google could answer that question. I don't know that Google it, it understands exactly mm -hmm. which direction it's going for. I think Google to a certain degree which is all of these different departments uh, you know doing many different things. They want to be everything. And they want to be everything for as long as they're tasked to do that until suddenly they get recognized for the work they did over there. I'm talking about like an individual like product manager or something like that. And suddenly he or she gets transferred over to this other thing. And then that thing dies on the vine because there's no more person there to vie for it. It As a company, it seems like a lot of their efforts are not executed with the company in mind. It's more like, eh, I've got this really great idea. Okay, you do that. And they do that and it gets successful, but it's not like, it's not considered this big major success for Google. It's a major success for it. And then once the person yeah. that champions My that team. thing is gone, then that it falls apart. And as a consumer, as a user of Google, it's just kind of exhausting at a certain point. It's like, I, there's only so many times I can put my faith into this product and then have it disappear on me again. And I think, yeah. I mean, it's a fascinating period because, because right, Facebook realized that everything it stood for was shrinking. So it decides to go full metaverse and then that doesn't really work. So now it decides <laughs> to go yeah. AI. Um, Microsoft, um, is kind of, I think, ruining its consumer products by throwing AI inappropriately. Um, Google is screwing all these properties that we cared about. It's really interesting to figure that out. Apple, and I'm not, a, as you know, I'm no Apple fanboy because I think that they got out of the advertising business just because they failed and privacy became a bug, became a feature, but they have to stick close to the consumer. Mm. Um uh, you know, and if you look at media companies, media companies, except for little ones like this, aren't close to consumers. They're just selling, they, they're the ones who, for whom you are a product because they're selling your eyeballs to advertisers, always have been. There's not a lot of truly consumer, customer-based companies on the internet out there, now that we think about it, now that we're discussing this. I hadn't thought of this before. Mm -hmm. Hey there, Scott Wilkinson here. In case you hadn't heard, Home Theater Geeks is back. Each week, I bring you the latest audio video news, tips and tricks to get the most out of your AV system, product reviews, and more. You can enjoy Home Theater Geeks only if you're a member of Club Twit, which costs seven bucks a month, or you can subscribe to Home Theater Geeks by itself for only $2.99 a month. I hope you'll join me for a weekly dose of Home Theater Geekitude.